Okay, let's talk about rational functions. Rational functions are another type of function that are made up of a quotient of two separate functions. So here's f of x equals n of x over d of x. Uh, I'm using n and d to represent the numerator and the denominator, and I'll follow that convention throughout the video. Here's a few examples of rational functions. Um, this one on the right is what most of the examples in this video are going to resemble. It's a quotient of polynomials. Uh, the one in the middle is a bit more complicated because we have a sine of x in there, but everything I'm going to say about rational functions can still apply to a function like that. This one on the left is also a quotient with polynomials, but you could, uh, you could distribute this 1 over 2x to the terms in the numerator and simplify that a little bit. Uh, so most of the functions I'll be looking at just as examples will look like this one on the far right. Uh, let's first look at a really simple one, f of x equals 1 over x. Here's what the graph of this function looks like. Like something like this. Uh, you might be tempted to call this a polynomial because it's a power of x, but I think it has more in common with rational functions than polynomials. Uh, so the function looks something like this. It's supposed to be symmetric, but I didn't draw it perfectly. Uh, I want you to see that this has two asymptotes. So this has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So what are asymptotes? Asymptotes are when the function is going to, uh, in this case a vertical asymptote, the function is going to blow up on either side of an x value. So it's, this graph is going to get, uh, as it gets closer and closer to the x-axis, because our vertical asymptote is at x equals 0, so as it gets closer and closer to x equals 0, uh, the function gets higher and higher. And it can get as high as you wish just by picking an x-value close enough to 0. So that's what a vertical asymptote is. Why do we get that? Well, think about what this number looks like when we have an x close to 0. Of course, right at x equals 0, it's undefined. But if I have 1 over 0 0.0001, Right, I have 1 over a really small number. So this fraction is going to be a really big number. This is going to be, I think, 10,000. So that becomes a really big number close to x equals 0. So that's why you get a vertical asymptote. Uh, the horizontal asymptote is when, as x gets really large in the positive or negative direction, uh, the function approaches a value without ever uh, being equal to that value. So in this case, it approaches y equals 0. And that's because if you think about 1 over a really big number, like 10,000, that fraction is going to be really small. That's going to be almost 0. And as x gets even bigger, it'll get even closer to 0. So that's why you get a horizontal asymptote in this function. That's also where the vertical asymptote comes from. Uh, so let's look at identifying the vertical asymptotes when your function is not as simple as 1 over x. Vertical asymptotes usually occur when the denominator is equal to 0, and that's because, you know, it's the same sort of idea. You're going to have a reasonably sized number like 1 divided by a really small number like 0 0.0001, and that's why you get the vertical asymptote. So here's an example. You might be given this rational function and be asked to uh, find the vertical asymptotes. First, you ought to try to factor it. Although it may not factor, you basically just want to solve the equation x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0, so you might have to complete the square on that. Uh, but as you can see, this does actually factor, and you have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 1 and x equals 3, and that's because those are the x values that make the denominator equal to 0. So that's where you'll have vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes are a lot trickier to um, identify. You have to think about if n of x or d of x is growing faster than the other one. Um, so you think about if the numerator or the denominator uh, is getting bigger faster uh, than, than the other one. So generally, higher degree polynomials grow faster than lower degree ones. The lower powers of x don't matter at high values of x. So this gives us one way to look at whether the numerator is growing faster than the, than the denominator by just looking at the degrees of the polynomials. So if n of x grows faster, then there's no horizontal asymptote. So what does all of this mean that higher degree polynomials grow faster? Well, let me demonstrate that with this example. Here's an example where n of x is growing faster because we have a degree 3 polynomial on the numerator and only a degree 2 polynomial on the denominator. When you're looking at high values of x, like say x equals 100, which is you know comparatively not even that high, but as you look at high values of x, higher powers of x totally eclipse lower power, powers of x. So x cubed, that's going to be 100 cubed, which is uh, a million, right? So we have a million divided by 100 squared, that's going to be uh, 1 with 4 zeros, so 10,000 uh, plus 200 plus 5, right? When, when you're talking in terms of a million, 10,000 and 205 is meaningless. It, it 
is totally eclipsed by the million in the numerator. So that's why since the numerator is growing faster, since it has a higher degree, this is not going to have a horizontal asymptote. It's just going to get bigger and bigger as x gets bigger and bigger. Um, on the other hand, if d of x grows faster, if the den denominator is growing faster, then you'll always have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So here's an example where the denominator has a degree five polynomial and the numerator is only degree two. And so again, you can even just look at x equals 10 for this one because the difference is so extreme. We're gonna have three times 100 plus 10 in the numerator. Uh, so that sounds like maybe it's a big number, but when you look at 10 to the fifth power, that's one with five zeros. That's 100,000 plus three, right? The numerator is totally eclipsed by the denominator in this case. So the denominator is gonna grow faster and faster and uh, you're gonna end up with some number divided by an extremely large number. So that's why you're gonna approach y equals zero. That's where that horizontal asymptote comes from. If n of x and d of x grow equally fast and the horizontal asymptote is at, the, at, at y equals to the ratio of leading coefficients. And that's because as x gets bigger and bigger, the, the smaller powers of x are totally eclipsed. They, they don't matter nearly as much as the big powers of x. So as x gets really large, this function looks more and more just like a ratio uh, 5x to the fourth divided by 3x to the fourth. And then you could think about those x to the fourths canceling, and this just approaches 5 thirds. So this idea of a function approaching a certain value, you're going to talk about that a lot more in calculus, uh, but I wanted to give you a little bit of preview with rational functions and finding the horizontal asymptotes. Uh, the rest of the things we'll talk about are not quite as hard. Uh, the zeros of rational functions occur generally when the numerator is equal to zero. So all I mean by the zeros of a function are the x values that make that function equal to zero. It's not hard to see that when the numerator is zero, then the entire fraction is going to be zero. So in this case, at x equals negative one, the numerator will be zero, and x equals negative two, the numerator will be zero, and both of those will mean that the entire fraction is zero. The only time when you have zero over something that is not equal to zero is when you have zero over zero, right? Because that's undefined. So most of the time when you have zero over something, uh, that will be zero, so you can generally look for your zeros when the numerator is equal to zero. Uh, but if both the numerator and the denominator are zero at the same x value, then you have what's called a whole. Uh, this happens when n of x and d of x have a common factor. So if you look at this function right here, you might be tempted to cross out this common factor and just call this x. And that is true, but only if uh, x does not equal two because f of two is not equal to two. f of two is equal to something divided by zero, right? It's undefined. So for every x value other than two, this graph just looks like y equals x. Um, but right at two, we have what's called a hole. So that the way you actually draw this is with a little, little hole like that. Um, so this is how you get a hole. It's when both the numerator and the denominator are equal to zero. So you get an undefined function value. Um, so you can only cancel this common factor if you put in this little caveat that uh, x has to not be equal to zero because actually at x equals zero, the function is undefined. So let's do a big example where we identify all the zeros, asymptotes, and holes of the following rational function. You can use the tricks I showed you in the last video to factor this down to uh, this form, which makes it a lot easier to uh, identify everything. So let's look first for holes. We're looking for common factors. In this case, we have uh, an x squared, which is actually an x cubed in the numerator, and an x squared in the denominator. So that means that x equals zero uh, is a value that will make both the numerator and denominator equal to zero. So we have a hole there. Zeros are when the numerator is zero. So that's x equals two and x equals negative five. Vertical asymptotes are when the denominator is equal to zero. Let's start with this one. Two x squared minus 18 equals zero. That just turns into uh, x squared equals nine or x is plus or minus three. So we get two vertical asymptotes out of that factor. This one, x squared plus four, we actually don't get any vertical asymptotes out of because there's no x value that will make x squared equal to negative four. So this factor is never actually equal to zero, so we don't get any vertical asymptotes out of that. Uh, the horizontal asymptote, it might be easier to look at the non-factored form because here we can easily see that the degree of the denominator is bigger. So since the degree of the denominator is bigger, it will overpower the numerator in the long one. Uh, so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So that's basic analysis of rational functions. I hope this video has helped you get a better idea of rational functions and how they behave. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.